Will it be in Queen Saba to retain her throne at the Australian Open and defend her title? Will it be Queen Zheng who will come up and actually usurp Sabalenka from the throne and win her first ever Grand Slam title? We're going to get into it. Before we do that, remember to hit that like button. Do subscribe if you're new. Do the rating review if you're listening on a podcast platform. We're going to break down the Australian Open 2024 WTA final. And I'm very much looking forward to this intriguing matchup. Sabalenka, of course, playing her third ever Grand Slam final. She's a defending Australian Open champion and also made the final of the US Open uh, just last year, um, only a few months ago, losing to Goff in three sets. Zhang is in her first ever Grand Slam final 10 years after her compatriot Lena won the title in Australia. So, look, there's a lot of significance for both players. Zhang looking to make a big splash on the WTA tour. Sabalenka looking to go back to back in Australia and also uh, looking to, I guess, stamp her authority uh, on the tour. And Sviontek was seen as the most dominant player after winning the WTA finals at the back end of last year. Uh, Goff, of course, won the titles of Von Drusova and Sviontek and, and Sabalenka. But if Sabalenka wins the Australian Open here, given her consistency at the slams last year, uh, she will look to, to really kick on and potentially win even more than one uh, this year, which would be impressive. So a lot to kind of think about in this matchup, in honesty. We're going to break it down in a few ways, talk about their road to the finals first, then briefly on the head-to-head, talk about their styles as well. And then I mainly want to focus on the matchup. So how's it going to look on court? What I think both players should focus on in terms of tactics. And then ultimately, I will give you guys my predictions. So let's talk about that road to the final for both players. For Zheng, it's been pretty plain sailing. Be bolted in straight sets. Wang was a tough one to be her final set tiebreaker. Won that in three sets. Dodin was straight sets. Kalinskaya three sets as well. Yastremska was straight sets. For Sabalenka, she's face stiffer competition. Zheng's route uh, generally pretty, uh, I would say, straightforward on paper anyway. Uh, Sardell for Vitova Serenko, who's a double bagel, by the way. That was um, just incredible. Uh, Anissa Mova, all in straight sets. Kuchikova, of course, a Grand Slam champion, but just since making that comment about saying she should be in with Rabakina and Shvantek and Sabalenka in the same conversation, she hasn't managed to do anything, unfortunately, for her. And Coco Goff, uh, the US Open champion and a replay of the US Open final, of course. Sabalenka getting revenge in straight sets, an impressive victory for the Belarusian. In terms of the head-to-head, Sabalenka beat Zheng at the US Open only a few months back. And uh, it was a straight set victory and very comprehensive in honesty. Zheng said after the match that uh, she really struggled with the the heaviness of Sabalenka's ball and how hard she's able to hit the ball through the court. Uh, just took her back and she wasn't able to combat it. So at least she's got that little bit of experience from a few months ago to lean upon. She might feel uh, the nerves even more given that Sabalenka dominated so badly and it's her first ever Grand Slam. Or she might be able to adjust quickly and take it as motivation to say, right, I'm going to now get one over her and show what I'm made of. So let's see. In terms of style, Sabalenka, of course, is going to look to dictate with her serve and her baseline power with an emphasis to make Zheng uncomfortable on the back foot. Uh, for Zheng, she has a big first serve and has, has hit the most actually amount of aces in this tournament. Sabalenka, of course, has a very big serve herself, but uh, Zheng's first serve seems to be very potent and that's highlighted by uh, being that ace leader. However, her first serve percentage is generally low on average, which is a big shame in all honesty. She also has a heavy forehand and impressive athleticism. In terms of what I think pl- both players should do, for Sabalenka, she should try to target the Zheng forehand return. We've seen a lot of opponents doing it so far in this tournament, and they've had very success. But I'd say for the most part, it has been a clever tactic. I think you still need to have variations to the body and the backhand return, but that should be something people should be looking to go to, especially if they're going to be able to drag her out on that forehand return. Her forehand return is very inconsistent in comparison to her backhand return. I think it was against Yastremska. She'd made 93% of backhand returns and only 70% of forehand returns. Uh, So there's a big difference there, a big disparity, I think, between her forehand and backhand returns. Uh, she should also try to keep Zheng on the back foot, Sabalenka, and stay patient in the rallies. Uh, Zheng has great defense, especially on her forehand. 
and her forehand slice is an incredibly effective defensive tool. Uh, we saw it utilized against Jastrzemska really, really nicely. Very low over the net. Finds some great depth and also just pace as well uh, through the air. So it's a really impressive defensive um, tool that she utilizes. And uh, I was quite impressed with how she is able to use it so effectively. Uh, Sabalenka, of course, you know, is going to look to shorten points. But when I talk about her being patient, I mean choosing the right opportunities to attack. And she's been very good at doing that at this Australian Open. Uh, so if she continues in the same vein, she should uh, give herself a really good chance in this match. Um, I also think Sabalenka could try and mix in some backhand slices when she can to disrupt Zheng's rhythm. Um, I think that's probably a, a clever idea if Zheng is starting to get comfortable in the rallies because Sabalenka is hitting a lot in, at one pace. I feel like Zheng is a type of player who really feeds off rhythm. Um, in addition to transitioning, coming forward to the net to shorten points as a tactic, I think that's important for Sabalenka. She's very good. She's got one of the best swing or drive volleys, I think, on tour. And she's, in my opinion, the best when she's looking to come forward um, and be proactive. Sabalenka is usually go to press on the front foot on the second serve returns. Uh, I think that's quite important as well. Uh, she, in my opinion, is the best on tour when it comes to punishing second serves currently at the moment. Uh, and it will obviously add pressure on Zheng's serve. Uh, and that will be a really useful uh, thing for Sabalenka to be able to do to have Zheng really second guess her serve uh, and start to really feel the pressure on it. Uh, crucial to, of course, opening up break points. Uh, for Zheng, she needs to make more first serves than she has been. It's the first serve in percentage has been so low. At times below 50%, it's just not good enough. And uh, if she does make more first serves, it puts her in, in good stead. It will help her win more free points on her service games. Uh, given she's got a big first serve, she'll hit more aces on returnables. And it will release some of the pressure and tension in those service games, especially given it's her first ever Grand Slam final. Uh, Zheng should also look to get into the forehand to forehand exchanges with Sabalenka. Her forehand is heavy, is Zheng's, and she has a great cross-court forehand. Uh, Sabalenka's forehand in the past has been susceptible to breaking down, not as much recently, but her backhand, I would say, is still uh, the more trustworthy weapon, and I actually think her best shot is the backhand down the line. Uh, Zheng, I would argue maybe it's a forehand cross-court, although her backhand is very reliable as well, in honesty. Uh, but I would, yeah, I would suggest that she tries to go forehand to forehand with Sabalenka, uh, try and mix it up with uh, some pace and also spin, uh, try and find some good angles. I think it will put her in a, a really good position to uh, battle Sabalenka in that instance and give her some momentum as well on the rallies. I think she, sh she should also try to drag Sabalenka out when she can um, with those angles. And uh, utilizing slices off both wings is not a bad option. Uh, to mix up the rhythm in the rally, especially when Sabalenka is attacking relentlessly because we know Sabalenka will just keep on going and just hammer blow after hammer blow after hammer blow. And if Zheng is feeling rushed and she feels like she's not able to, uh, you know, kind of give something back in terms of uh, a quality uh, topspin or flatter ground stroke, then I think the slice, the defensive slices could come into effect uh, and could play a really important part in that. Just giving her more time uh, being able to, you know, recuperate better in terms of her positioning on court and just give her a better opportunity to defend well and try and get to neutral in those rallies. In terms of my prediction, and I've gone for Sabalenka in two very tight sets. I think Zheng needs to max out and Sabalenka needs to have an off day or a bad day at the office anyway uh, for Zheng to win. And that's not to say Zheng is in a really good place. She is, but I still think she's a she's a real work in progress and it's impressive she's made the final and I'm excited for her. She's a real talent and I think she will win a slam or slams in her career but just not at this Australian Open. She's still very young. She's only 21 uh, so her time will come uh, but I just think at the moment Sabalenka's time is now. I just feel like her time is now uh, and if Zheng wins it would be massive and of course great for China and uh, look me and I will be in the crowd there so she'll she'll be feeling uh, the a sense of responsibility and also a sense of pride uh, that she's made it to the final, Zheng. And uh, hopefully she gives it her all when we get a really competitive final. Let me know in the comment section below who you think is going to win and why. Thank you very much, guys. Stay safe and well. We'll see you in the next video.